Hey guys, today I'll be updating on my 2022 Senate election prediction for the month of February 2022, and I'll be doing these every single month and a few more as November approaches. So we have the primaries in the late spring and early summer, and as a result of that, we will be able to see very soon who the candidates are in each race. So currently, the Senate stands 50-50. The Democrats have won a very narrow majority. It honestly is not even a majority. They won half the seats, but with the vice presidency who breaks the ties, they did win control of the the U.S. Senate for the first time since 2014. 2020, of course, 50-50 for both the Democrats and the Republicans. 2018, this was the first midterm after Trump's election in 2016. He actually did very well in the Senate. They actually gained a seat from what they had previously. However, in 2018, they did lose the House by a big margin. 2016, held by the Republicans. 2014, of course, also a Republican-led Senate, but in 2012, this was the last time in which the Democratic Party won the control of the U.S. Senate prior to 2020 with the re-election of Barack Obama. I mean, Democrats won with Claire McCaskill in Missouri. Heidi Heitkamp won in North Dakota. We had John Tester in Montana, so Democrats were winning all across the board. So all the states and see on this map, this these are the states in which we'll be having elections in in 2022. In 2020, we have the two special elections in Georgia and Arizona. Kelly elected in Arizona, Mark Kelly. And in Georgia, we have the election of Raphael Warnock. So those two will be up for re-election as Democratic incumbents, replacing the two Republicans, John and Isaacson, who retired due to health issues in 2018 and in Arizona, where John McCain unfortunately passed away. So both of the these two seats are now held by Democrats, and so that makes it even harder for them to defend, as these are states in which Joe Biden was able to win in 2020, but the last time a Democratic presidential nominee won these two states was Bill Clinton in 1992 for Georgia and 1996 for Arizona. So before I get started with this prediction, make sure you join my Discord server if you have not, the link which is at the very top of the description below, where you can find a lot more information on the 2022 Senate races. So I'm going to start off by filling in the solid Democratic seats on this map. Washington, Oregon, California, all these West Coast states are going to be solid blue. Hawaii as well. We have Tammy Duckworth in Illinois, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer in New York, Patrick Leahy in Vermont. Leahy will not be running for re-election. He is currently the president pro tempore and the longest serving Democratic senator in the Senate currently, but he will unfortunately not be running for a seventh or eighth term. Uh, I forgot which one it exactly was. I believe he will not be running for an eighth term, I believe is what it is, but he will be replaced by a Democrat nonetheless. Richard Blumenthal in Connecticut and in the state of Maryland, we actually have some good news for the Democratic Party because Chris Van Hollen will be able to easily win his re-election as Republican Governor Larry Hogan, the only person really with a chance of defeating Van Hollen in 2022, has announced that he will not be running for the Senate. He said that he is not interested in joining Congress, and he, th he said that he would not really make that much of a difference uh, you know, than he has as governor of the state. So even though Mitch McConnell, many Republicans have tried to lobby him to run for a very long time, the deadline is only in a couple of days, and it looks like Larry Hogan at this point is just not going to be challenging Chris Van Hollen. I think that if he did, he would have a very good chance. There was a poll release a couple of weeks ago showing Larry Hogan up 12. I don't think that was going to happen, but definitely it shows that he had a very good chance at defeating Chris Van Hollen, who is a relatively weak Democrat first elected in 2016, although by a margin of 25%. The state of Maryland, of course, though, is one of the most democratic states in the country. So, this now gives the Democrats 45, and the Republicans, with their solid seats, will put them up at a grand total, actually, of... 42. So 42 for the Republicans, 45 for the Democratic Party. Uh, Republicans, of course, are going to very easily win many of these races. All of these were solid except for Kentucky and Indiana in 2016. Kentucky's Todd Young and K K uh, uh, Indiana's Todd Young and Kentucky's Rand Paul, I think, are both going to win by over 15% solid margins in 2022. It will be a red wave year, as it typically is after the election of a Democratic president and vice versa as well. So, uh, of course, in 2018, uh, the Republicans did actually expand their Senate majority after the election of Donald Trump, but they did suffer big losses in the House. So, 
Although, you know, we do expect a red wave coming in 2022, it does not necessarily mean not necessarily mean that the Republican Party is just going to sweep everything. So I actually have one more for the Republican Party, and that is the state of Iowa with Chuck Schumer, not Chuck Schumer, uh, Chuck Grassley running for his reelection. He announced this a couple of months ago, still relatively late, but Chuck Grassley did announce that he would be running for an eighth term in the U.S. Senate. This puts them up at 43, and this is a big deal for the GOP as this race could have been pretty competitive if not for him running for re-election. He, of course, in 2016, won by 25% and has won by much larger margins in the past over the many decades in which he has served in the U.S. Senate. So this gives the GOP 43 with their solid states and the Democrats 45. Now, a couple other states that I do want to go over that are going to be pretty easy wins for the Republicans. These are the likely states in which I think the GOP will be able to win by a margin of over 5%. First off, in the state of Missouri, Eric Greens and Eric Schmidt are the current frontrunners. Uh, the Democratic frontrunner is Lucas Kuhn. Scott Sifton, though, still does have a chance. But Eric Greens and... Eric Schmidt are both doing pretty well in polling. They have basically led in every single poll release between them and the main Democratic candidates. So Missouri is not going to be too difficult of a win. I think definitely a solid margin of over 15% is out of reach, but 5% is more than doable for any of the two Republican contenders. In the state of Ohio, Rob Portman will be retiring. And of course, in Missouri, Roy Blunt will also be retiring after winning by just 2% in 2016. So in Ohio, though, Rob Portman won by 21 points by 2022, citing the dysfunction that is present in Congress. He says that he will not be running for a fourth term. And so this definitely does leave a big gap in the map here, as Ohio had been very solid blue for Rob Portman, or solid red for Rob Portman for many decades now. And so... The, you know, there will obviously be a pretty competitive race here. Josh Mandel is currently the GOP frontrunner, and for the Democrats, it is undisputedly Tim Ryan. There are basically no other Democrats in the race at this point. Tim Ryan is currently a U.S. representative. He has announced that he will not be running for re-election in the House and will be instead focusing on his Senate campaign. I think that will obviously be a mistake because he will end up losing the Senate campaign. I currently have the state of Ohio as likely, over 5% at least, for the GOP. I think Josh Josh Mandel can definitely do that. The polls obviously don't tell you this, but the GOP is going to do better than expected, and I definitely think that it will be a pretty easy win for them. They will have to spend money, they will have to spend time and effort into retaining this seat, but Tim Ryan is not that big of a threat. I think he's one of the best Democrats that the party could have put up, but still, they could have done a lot better if they had some better candidates. So this puts both parties at 45 seats. I have one likely seat for the Democratic Party in that is, that is the seat in Colorado. I do think that Michael Bennett will be able to win his re-election in 2022. He will likely run against Eli Bremer, a former Olympian for the United States. So Michael Bennett is currently polling pretty well against his potential GOP candidates. And I think that My Michael Bennett obviously will end up on top in this race in November. Uh, it's not going to be too difficult for him or the Democratic Party. 5% will definitely be pretty simple for him to crack. I will also be giving the GOP now the state of Florida uh, with the re-election of Marco Rubio for a third term, first elected in 2010, came third in the 2016 GOP primary for president, re-elected in 2016 by 7.7%, and I think he will be able to win by a likely margin again in 2022. So, Val Demings has no chance. Marco Rubio is currently pulling 8.7 points ahead of her, and the race is, I mean, it is pretty early, but he won by 8% last time, and... He He's probably going to win by an even larger margin this time as a third time incumbent now. Val Demings really has no chance at winning this seat. She is currently a representative from uh, a district in Florida, a very liberal district in the state. She has a police history. She's not going to do that well with independence. Uh, she's not even going to do that well with her own party. So I think that this will be a pretty easy race that will be decided pretty quickly. Marco Rubio will win his re-election. So this puts the Republicans and Democrats now both at 46 seats. Another state I wanted to take a look at was the state of Alaska. I'm going to categorize it currently as likely just because I think that Lisa Murkowski is going to face some trouble, especially on the first ballot. So in the state of Alaska, we have a pretty interesting race here. Lisa Murkowski, the Republican incumbent, is running for re-election. You essentially have no Democrats in this race. You do have an independent that would caucus with them being Al Gross. 
Algros is really not a candidate in this race anymore. He was the independent candidate in 2020 running against Dan Sullivan. But in 2022, Lisa Murkowski, the not Trump supporter, you know, currently has 35% in the latest poll. Kelly Shibaka, the Trump endorsed America first candidate, you know, 23%. And Sarah Palin in this latest poll, she has expressed interest. I don't think she's really going to have too much of a chance, but she does have 20%. And in Alaska, the state will be using ranked choice of voting. So with that, Lisa Murkowski, I think, has cemented her position that she will be reelected in 2022. Uh, it really will not be too difficult. Um, you know, on the ranked choice voting ballot, Lisa Murkowski will be probably the second choice, at least for a huge majority of voters, if not the first. She has won when she has lost the GOP nomination, so basically Kelly Shibaka is trying to win the Republican nomination away from Lisa Murkowski. Even if she does that, that does not mean she's going to win. Lisa Murkowski lost a GOP nomination for her seat in 2010 to Joe Miller, but she still ended up winning, and then Joe Miller ran as a Libertarian in 2014, or 2016, and Lisa Murkowski won by 15%. So, I do think Lisa Murkowski will end up on top. I don't think she has that much to worry about, but this does give the GOP an extra seat. Mitch McConnell and many establishment Republicans are going against Trump. They do not want Lisa Murkowski primaried because they do not want to waste money and time on a race that really does not matter with them. Lisa Murkowski does vote with the Republican Party. She will vote with the Republican Party on a huge majority of resolutions. So she's not some rogue Republican. She is still a Republican at heart. Um, she just did vote for the conviction of Donald Trump, which is really just Trump's problem with her. So this puts the GOP up one seat now at 47 with all of the likely and lean seats filled in. So now I want to take a look at the state of New Hampshire for the Democratic Party. I do think that Maggie Hassan will win her re-election. I don't think this race... Sh you know, is as competitive as people are making it seem. The state of New Hampshire at the end of the day is favored more towards the Democratic Party. And, you know, this shows Maggie Hassan leads in every single poll against the potential GOP nominees. If you look at currently the GOP uh, Senate nomination in New Hampshire, Chuck Morse, Donald Bulldo, both the two frontrunners in this race, they are both polling 6.5% below Maggie Hassan for Bulldo and 11% behind Masson, Hassan for Chuck Morse. So, at this point, the Democratic incumbent who defeated Kelly Ayotte, the Republican incumbent in 2016, I think that Maggie Hassan will be able to, you know, of course, end up winning her re-election. Before this, it was looking very, very bad for us. Kristen Nunez, the Republican governor, was yet to announce that he would not be challenging Hassan and would be instead running for another term as governor of the state. So Kristen Nunez was the only one that was able to defeat Maggie Hassan in the polls, and he has since dropped out of this race, dropped out of contention, which is why Maggie Hassan now is on such a clear path to victory. I don't think she will have too much trouble winning her re-election in 2022 for a second six-year term. Of course, in 2016, she only won by 0.1% against a Republican incumbent defending her seat in a year where the Republicans were able to win 52 seats and hold on to the majority. So definitely Maggie Hassan is not that weak of a candidate, and this gives both Democrats and Republicans 47. Next up is the state of North Carolina, this one being a Republican. State. Ted Budd currently is the front runner for this race in New Hampshire, um, not New Hampshire, in North Carolina. And Pat McRory is the second place candidate right now for the GOP. Uh, he is the former governor who lost to Roy Cooper in 2018. So, Pat, McC Pat McCrory would not be the best candidate. Ted Budd is actually Trump endorsed, so that definitely is a big advantage that he has. Trump has consistently supported Budd in this race, and I think that that will make it a lot easier for him to win the GOP nomination. Sherry Beasley at this point is the Democratic nominee. I think that she has a chance at doing well, but I don't think that she will end up winning. In 2020, you saw Cal Cunningham even lose to Tom Tillis, even though Tom Tillis was a very bad candidate. And Cal Cunningham, besides that one scandal, Handle, had raised so much money, had so much support, he still ended up losing by over one percentage point. So I do think Sherry Beasley will not be able to come out on top, despite the fact that she is not pulling too terribly, she is still pulling pretty badly. So 
and this gives the GOP an extra seat. Next up, I want to take a look at another race that I will categorize as in favor of the GOP, and this is the state of Wisconsin and Ron Johnson. So I, by lean, I mean margins of 2 to 5%. By likely, I mean margins of 5 to 15. Of course, solid is 15 or more, but by tilt, uh, which is this lightest color, of course, it is going to be anything less than 1%. So Wisconsin, I do think that Ron Johnson will win his re-election. It's not going to be too hard for him. Uh, he has won two times in the past, 20 10 and 2016. The latest polls are not the best for Ron Johnson. The latest poll against Mandela Barnes, who is the Democratic frontrunner, do show them in a even race, but that is obviously probably not true. Ron Johnson probably has just been misrepresented, so it will be another pretty easy win for the Republican Party. It will be close. They will have to work for it, but I don't think there is too much panic within the Republican Party that Ron Johnson might actually lose. And Ron Johnson, of course, was basically one of the last Republicans to announce that would that they would be running for re-election. So moving on down south to the west and the state of Arizona, I will be giving this state for the Democratic Party. I do think that Mark Kelly will be able to defeat Mark Bronovich, the GOP frontrunner for this race. Mark Kelly, of course, was elected in the 2020 special election for Arizona, winning by 2% over Martha McSally, who, of course, will probably not be returning into politics anytime soon. She lost to Kansas Cinema in 2018. She was an appointed senator by Doug Ducey. She didn't lost to Mark Kelly in 2020, so she spent around a year in Congress, did absolutely nothing, and left very quickly. So Mark Kelly is winning in every single poll that has been released, and I don't think this will change too much. I think that Arizona, although it will be a close race, it will be a race where Mark Kelly ends up coming out on top. And moving on to the state of Pennsylvania, I think this is one of the most interesting races that we have in, you know, late this year. And for Pennsylvania, I'm just going to say it, I will be giving to the Democratic Party. I do think that they will be able to have a very good chance at holding on to their seat in Pennsylvania. John Fetterman currently is the Democratic frontrunner. I think that he is probably one of the best people that they could have put for this race. Connor Lamb is in a distant second. There are more undecided voters than there are Lamb voters. And so I think that at this point in time, John Fetterman is on track to victory. Can't hold the polls, of course. John Fetterman destroying Connor Lamb. Connor Lamb is yet to actually reach 20% since the first poll that was released back in May. So I do think that John Fetterman will be able to win his re-election. That is why I have it as a tilt state. Now for the Republicans, I do have the state of Nevada. I think Catherine Cortez Masto will lose her re-election to Adam Lixalt. She may be leading in the latest poll release, but there were many polls in which Cortez Masto was falling behind. And finally, we have the state of Georgia, where Raphael Warnock will be running for his re-election against Herschel Walker. Walker, of course, is currently leading by just one percentage point in terms of the polling aggregate. This is not too accurate. There have not been that many polls released, but the latest polls do show Herschel Walker doing relatively well against Raphael Warnock. I think that 2020 was, of course, a very good year for Democrats. They had a lot of enthusiasm going into those special elections because or those runoff elections because Biden won the state in November. 2022, they will not have that. Democrats are not too enthusiastic about how their own party is doing. And so as a result, I don't think he'll be able to hold on to it. He just will not have that sort of support that he did last year. So this was a GOP at 51 seats, Democrats at 49. So I do believe that the Republican Party will be able to flip back the Senate in 2022. And this is my updated 2022 map for February of this year. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it down below if you enjoyed it. Comment down below which party you think will win the Senate in 2022. Subscribe to my channel if you have not, and I will see you guys in the next video.